Okay, so this is uh, lecture 29. Okay, and we've, we've been looking at this uh, DFE structure for the general case and uh, the way I motivated it and way I introduced it was slightly different because the structure here requires some additional things to the minimum phase case that we saw before. So we need to do something else which is different. The final structure we derived looks something like this. It's SK, right? Thinking too far ahead. You have a general channel HC, then noise gets added to it. Okay, so the noise PSD we take it to be some SN. Okay, so presumably one can spectral factorize that. Okay, and uh, the structure here, there's one filter. I, I wrote it as DZ times WC. Okay, so you think of D of Z as a filter which minimizes ISI. And then W of Z as the filter which whitens the noise that results. Okay, so noise becomes non-white because you're filtering it, and W Z whitens the noise. Okay, and then, but what happens unfortunately is when you whiten noise, the signal that you somehow removed ISI from, right? The signal component when D of Z acted on the signal component, it removed the ISI, and then when you wanted to whiten the noise, unfortunately the signal also has to go through the W of Z. Right? So, signal becomes filtered by W of Z and you want to run 1 by W of Z just on the signal. Okay? So, a nice way of doing it is to run that the output of this filter through a slicer which gives you just the presumably just the signal component with some errors yes, but at least we will get the signal component alone and then you put it nicely in a feedback loop to implement 1 by W C. Okay, so this is kind of the way in which I motivated and did the design for DFE. Okay, and this this filter overall filter is called a precursor equalizer, and this is called a postcursor equalizer. Okay, so this is the general DFE structure. Okay, so So a few, few more remarks and comments and things to think about in these kind of uh, suboptimal things. So, so fundamentally, if you want to, if you want the ideal way of designing things is to minimize probability of error. Okay, so that's the ideal way of doing it. It's the optimal way of doing it. There's no questions asked. But unfortunately, if your channel has poles and all that, and you have an infinite impulse response, that thing goes out of the window. You're not going to be able to implement the ideal case. So you want to do something suboptimal. Okay. So when things are suboptimal, there is suboptimality in two ways, right? So you have the ideal signal plus ISI plus noise. Okay, noise is Gaussian. Okay, so you know the PDF. Okay, if you have signal alone buried in noise, you know what to do for detection. It's no problem. But you have signal which is Gaussian plus some other signal component which is clearly non-Gaussian. Okay, plus Gaussian again, which is noise. Okay, so the way these MSC criteria is dealing with the signal is it's kind of roughly equating that also to Gaussian and saying I'll minimize the total variance of ISI plus noise. Okay, right? So you see, if 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 it's just signal plus noise, then you want to minimize the variance of that noise because you know probability of error in signal plus noise depends as Q of one by sigma. If you reduce sigma, probability of error becomes better. You know that clearly. But if it is signal plus some non-Gaussian component plus some Gaussian component, it is not clear that the optimal thing to do is to reduce the overall variance in terms of probability of error. It's not clear. Okay, but that is a good approximation. Okay, so just to generally limit the variance of anything else that is other than your signal seems like a good approximation. Okay, and if you have a lot of ISI terms adding in the central limit, you might you might be able to argue that what you have is also Gaussian, so roughly probability of error can be minimized. Okay. But it turns out it's a dangerous argument to make because you have other signal component contributing. It's clearly not Gaussian, and just minimizing the variance may not be a good idea. Okay, so that's that's something to keep in mind. But it's a good practical fix to minimize the mean square error, even in the non-Gaussian case. In the Gaussian case, it's optimal. Non-Gaussian case, it's not really optimal, but we'll live with it. Okay, so that's the that's one more piece of information to think about in these designs. Okay, so that's the DFE structure. So now the question is, what is the question now? What's the next thing to do? Okay, given H of Z and S N, you have to find D of Z and W of Z. 
Okay, so how to find D of Z and W of Z is the question. Okay, in fact, the only question is how to find D of Z. Why? Yeah, from D of Z, right? So you do spectral factorization on SN times mod D square, you're going to get W of Z as 1 by the minimum phase component in the spectral factorization. So W of Z is directly derived once you know D of Z. Okay. So the question only remains, only remaining question is to find D of Z. And for that, we'll take inspiration from the linear equalizer. We'll say we can take D of Z to be the zero forcing linear equalizer or the MMSE linear equalizer criteria that we have. So you use those two criteria, pick the D of Z according to that criteria and then see what W of Z it results in and then see what mean square error it results in and compare and see if it is indeed better. Okay, so that's what we'll do in, the, in, in this lecture predominantly. Okay, that's clear, right? So that comp that choice, if you pick D of Z to be the zero forcing equalizer, what is the zero forcing linear equalizer? One by H. If you pick D of Z to be one by H, then you get what's called a zero forcing DFE. Okay, then of course you have to find the W of Z corresponding to that. That's more work than the linear equalizer. In the linear equalizer, we never found any W of Z. We just did one by H and then did what? Slicing. Okay, so you're not going to slice now. You have to find the noise whitening according to the spectral factorization. Okay, so that's the that's those are the two things we'll see. We'll quickly go through that. Okay. So the first choice is the zero forcing decision feedback equalizer. Okay, and here the choice is you pick D equals 1 over H. Okay, right? So, okay, so, 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 so to calculate the the error after D, okay, so you have to calculate the error after D and try to whiten it, right? Okay, so that's important. So what's happening to the noise? NK is flowing through D and you get EK. Am I right? That's the, that's roughly, well, you don't get EK. Uh, well, let me be careful here. Okay, so let me, let me not do this. Let me not do this. I, I, I think I had this picture before. What is the picture? There are two things, right? SK goes through something and then NK goes through something else and then you have to subtract, right? So keep that picture in mind. SK goes through HD minus 1. Am I right? So in this case, HD minus 1 becomes 0. So there's no SK component. Okay, But in general, you will have that also. And then you have uh, NK going through D. So let me draw the complete picture so that we can go back to this. And this gives you EK. Right? This is our model for EK. Okay? So now what is the spectral, uh, the PSD for E? Since this is 0, it's simply Sn times mod D square. Okay, so D, D star. Okay, that is my uh, SE. Okay, so D is 1 by H. So in fact, this is Sn by mod H square. Okay, so all you have to do is a spectral factorization on this. Okay, given a H of Z, assuming it's rational and SN is rational, one can always find the spectral factorization. You'll know exactly what the minimum phase components are. Okay, so suppose we do that. Okay, suppose we write SC, which is SN by mod H squared as some epsilon square times ME times ME star. This is the spectral factorization. Okay, so remember. Okay, so what will epsilon square be? Geometric mean of SE, right? So the geometric mean of SN divided by mod H square. Okay, so this involves an ugly integral. You can avoid integral in the rational case by actually doing the spectral factorization, forcing ME and ME star to be monic and whatever constant you get outside will automatically be your epsilon square okay so in the rational case you can clearly avoid integrals you don't you, don't, you won't have huge integrals in computing epsilon square 
so this can be computed okay so if you if you whiten this noise so what is the choice for the whitening filter now w is what 1 by me okay so that's how we are going to pick the whitening filter okay so inverting the minimum phase part which is eminently implementable you do that okay so once you whiten you get an e prime of k the variance of that e prime of k is your mean square error so essentially your mean square error becomes this epsilon square okay so you do spectral factorization on the noise and you are whitening the noise so clearly everything else goes away and the only uh, the power mean square power of error simply becomes this epsilon square which is which is the mean square error this is geometric mean of s n divided by mod h square okay so that's the that's the story okay so it's quite simple right so there's nothing really major going on you just pick w equals 1 by me you get the answer okay so so what i'm going to do now is to take the standard form just an assumption for h and then show how this how these two filters work out how the overall structure looks and make some comments on how implementable these structures are okay so let's see suppose i take h to be h0 times let's say h max times h min okay so let's say if there is a h0 okay i'll take some of them in h min and some of them in h max and adjust and do so things so so h0 will kind of say is one okay so we'll not worry about that too much okay so suppose h is this okay then what is sc okay and i'll also assume sn uh, spectrally factorizes as gamma n squared mn mn star okay the noise uh, power spectral density then sc becomes what just a question of substituting things there gamma n squared mn mn star divided by right h0 h0 star you will get a mod h0 square okay times what which will come to the minimum phase which will be the maximum phase okay so you will have h min and h max star as minimum phase do you agree okay it was maximum phase outside then you do a 1 by z star it's going to come inside right so that's h max star and h min star and h max will go to the maximum phase component okay so once you know the way h splits and you've spectrally factorized sn the factorization for sc becomes very obvious okay so in fact from here you find that me becomes what mn by okay assuming all these things are monic okay so you have to pull out the constants so that h0 is something so that h min and h max are monic once you do all that you get h max star and your epsilon square which is the msc becomes simply gamma n squared by mod h0 squared okay so this is in fact even easier okay so you simply look at h and make sure you pull out a h0 make h min and h max monic right and then you do uh, spectral factorization on se or in fact find the geometric mean of se right which is gamma n squared okay then you do that you divide the two you get a mean square error in the zero forcing dfe okay so that's uh, that's the story all right so once i choose me like this okay uh, i know my w d also is known d is simply 1 by h so i can now write the complete structure multiply d of z by w of z and write w of z minus 1 and write the complete structure and see how it works okay that's what i'm going to do next okay so d times w becomes what 1 by h which is 1 by h0 h min h max times w which was right here so worked out to be or what's w it's 1 by me right so h min h max star divided by mn okay so things will cancel and you get an interesting uh, 
uh, thing here. So 1 by h0, which is a constant, it's okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't make any any difference. Then you have h max star divided by h max, and then you have an mn inverse. Okay, so this is your dw, and of course the w is this is what I wrote here. Okay, so if you put all these things together, the final structure I get looks like this. Okay. SK goes through my symbol rate channel model which is HCE and it's going to factor as H0, Hmin, Hmax. Okay, remember these guys are monic. Only then I can make the simple substitutions. Then NK gets added to it. I'm going to say the PSD is SN which factors as gamma N square MN, MN star. Okay, and then my precursor equalizer is 1 by h0 h max star by h max and then mn inverse okay and then i have a slicer and my post cursor equalizer is h min H max star divided by Mn minus 1. Okay, so this is my postcast equalizer. I do it again. S hat k. Okay, and the and this is my zero forcing DFE. Okay, in short, and the what's the mean square error after all this? works out to be in some simple terms gamma n squared by mod h0 square you can also think of it as the geometric mean of sn divided by mod h square so it's the geometric mean of that as well okay so let me also write that because that's useful in theoretical comparisons geometric mean. okay so this is the precursor and this is the postcursor Anything interesting that strikes you about the precursor equalizer? Okay. So, okay. So there are lots of interesting properties about that. We'll come back to it slowly, but we'll make some few remarks as we go along. But the first thing uh, I want you to observe is, assuming s hat of k and all is accurate, right? The slicer error is white. Okay, so it's white Gaussian. Okay, so that's a nice property of uh, DFE, and we of course designed it like that, and it's good to see that it works out that way. Okay, so slicer error is white, which is an interesting property for DFE. Okay, so it works out very nicely in the way we designed that. Okay, the next comment is about the precursor equalizer. The precursor equalizer seems to have a constant part, which is quite irrelevant. You might want to just ignore that. Then it has h max star by h max. What kind of a frequency response is that? H max star by h max. Okay, magnitude response will be flat. Okay, so it's an all pass response. Okay, so that's the first uh, comment about the speakers. Okay, so magnitude of h max star by h max is 1. Okay, so it's definitely doing some all pass filtering so this is all pass i'm sorry yeah and then after that followed up with mn inverse which purely does what whitens the noise right so you can view the pre precursor as consisting of two parts phase filtering right which is going to play around with the with certain things without without causing too much trouble to the psd of the noise right if you do all pass filtering the psd of the noise is going to come through without any problem okay right when the psd level the phase makes no difference okay then you remove simply you do just mn inverse which is the same as the power spectral density with the spectral factorization for sn okay so this this all pass phase filtering right in terms of magnitude is nothing pretty much 
works on the signal the effect is on the on the signal to remove part of the isi okay so it removes part of the isi that's why you call it precursor removes the anti causal part predominant okay so it's interesting that it's all pass doesn't do anything else to the signal okay and then of course you have the postcursor equalizer which is h min h max star by no you can't say all that part of it mostly it will be anti as well it will remove some parts so we can we can't be very sure about what it removes okay so one can view it one can view certain similarities to the previous structure we had that's the only thing i'm saying okay some part uh, nothing beyond that can be assumed okay so that's the zero forcing uh, dfe it's interesting that the precursor precursor works uh, that way okay so if you have a non minimum phase channel where h max is not 1 okay right and h max has got zeros outside the unit circle 1 by h max is still going to cause trouble for you okay 1 by h max is going to be ir anti causal if you want to have a stable implementation and that's going to cause trouble in the implementation okay so that's the only problem other than that this is okay okay so if you want to do it this will work out quite well okay any questions or comments on how this is working out people are okay okay so these are so so you one thing you'll notice is several times we get filters which are clearly not implementable okay so in practice you'll have filters which are not implementable so what what all this means is these are kind of optimal suboptimal structures okay <laughs> so the criteria is suboptimal but once the criteria is suboptimal you don't place any practical constraints on the kind of filter that you can implement okay so you're just saying okay you give me whatever filter that comes out i'll see if i can implement it that's the so in that way it's you're you're kind of making some optimistic assumptions okay so later on we'll relax that we'll relax that and say i want to say my filter is finite tap has only so many taps you tell me what's the best design again in that case the filter, the question becomes really really practical so we'll do that also but for now we should at least know how the general structure should look see then if you're doing dfe and you want to do zero forcing dfe you know the structure to look for is roughly all pass and noise filtering noise whitening right so those kind of intuition you can get from the theory when you go to the practical side okay so but anyway in practice things are done slightly differently you, you will have to have finite tap filters okay so that's the only thing but these things give you nice comparisons if you do the finite tap case you can't do analysis analysis and you won't get any comparison okay so the next criteria is the mmse dfe okay so here the choice for d is the mmse choice for uh, isi after the filter okay so what is that it's es times h star divided by es mod h square plus sn okay so that's the minimum mean square choice for the for d we saw this right es times sz inverse h star so this is sz okay so sz is es times mod h square plus sn okay so let's just see all right so now for the error term you can't ignore the two paths but you know i have minimized my see i If from the expression the msc also is very easy to derive here okay so you know sc is what in this case right you complete its squares and you set one term to zero and whatever was remaining will be your sc and what remains was what es times sc inverse sn right that was my uh, previous case okay this was the power spectral density for the noise that remains after your mmc so now i have to whiten this noise which means i have to do a spectral factorization on sc of on this psd then figure out what the minimum phase component is that's what i'm going to do okay so clearly yes sc is a part of this so i might want to do spectral factorization on sc itself okay and of course sn also has a spectral factorization so eventually this works out to gamma n squared by gamma z squared mn by mz times 
mn star by mz star okay so this will be the spectral factorization okay so you notice this is your mean square error so me works out to mn by mz and your mean square error after whitening is going to work out to es times gamma n squared by gamma z squared okay right another way of writing the mse is what it's the geometric mean of what the se right so geometric mean is going to be es times sn divided by es mod h square plus sn and for comparisons with the previous case you might want to push the es down to the denominator okay if you push the es to the denominator you get this okay so if you go ahead and compare with the previous case in the previous case what was the mean square error zero forcing dfe it was sn by mod h square okay in the mmse dfe the minimum the mean square error is going down okay sn by mod h square plus sn by es okay but remember the mean square error going down may not mean anything in many cases okay so it just goes down you picked a beta filter it goes down okay maybe this is the minimum mean square error you can get which is fine it's great okay but that that may not mean much why because the error distribution is not gaussian right dfe is going to allow some symbol isi to come through as well okay so it's not gaussian so it doesn't directly translate into probability of errors there might be some adjustments you can make to improve on probability of error okay so those are interesting things to study but general in gen this is the minimum mean square error possible you can't possibly go below this okay so that's something we've studied okay so that's the msc all right so this is me and uh, anything else i should do okay so let me again once again do that final picture which has this w and everything together okay so d is this and uh, maybe i should do w here so w becomes what 1 by me which is mz by mn okay this becomes the whitening filter w so now i'm going to do the entire structure which means i'll need d times w d times w is going to be es times h star divided by sz right sz we factored as gamma gamma z square mz times mz star then w which was mz by mn okay so things will cancel and finally you will get a filter which looks like this some constant es by gamma z square times h star divided by mz star times mn inverse okay and w we knew is mz mn inverse so if you draw this whole picture you get a nice picture of the complete mmsc dfe noise psd is sn which factors is gamma n squared mn mn star h i'll keep as h itself okay so i'm not going to do h min h max okay it's not too important d times w becomes this interesting filter which is es by gamma z squared times h star by mz star mn inverse okay so where did where did all this uh, gamma z and all come from it came from the power spectral density of z which factored as okay so let me write the first expression power spectral density of z is going to be es times mod h squared plus sn clearly and that is going to factor as gamma z square mz mz star okay so that gave me all these things and then i do my post cursor which has a slicer which gives me the symbols back and then you filter through to get mz mn inverse minus 1 that gives you your 1 by okay so that's your uh, that's your uh, mmsc
so one can show that within this structure within the dfe structure the mean square error obtained using the mmse dfe is the minimal you can never go below that and what is that mean square error uh, we had two different expressions for it one expression is es gamma n squared by gamma c squared and also it's the geometric mean of this point okay so that's the structure so you see there are lots of striking similarities with the with the previous case the zero forcing dfe case okay you have a h star by mz star which is not all pass that's the first interesting thing so it's 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 not it's going to do something strange to uh, the way things are going to behave and then you do an mn inverse which is not uh, which does uh, which finally ends up whitening anyway so, so you see that's the that's the way it works so you have to visualize it slightly differently to see the whitening okay and then you do a 1 by mz mn inverse minus 1 so in fact the w of z is mz mn inverse so this is a slightly different thing okay so w of z looks eminently implementable it's a nice filter but here once again the h star might cause problems for you okay so it's a match filter right match filters with uh, if they have if the original thing has maximum component zeros then you're going to have trouble okay so it just may not work very easily okay so so that's one thing to pay pay attention to i'm sorry though if the original filter has poles inside then h star is going to have poles outside and that's going to cause ir anti causal problems okay so poles if the if your channel response has poles then match filtering is tough okay so by poles inside match filtering is tough so that becomes a problem so so that's something to watch out for and again mc star is showing up in the denominator that's also one more thing to watch out for so all these things might cause trouble for you okay so one thing i want to do before we proceed is to take this zero forcing dfe and mmsc dfe specialize to the case when h of z is m of z which is minimum phase okay so derive write down those two structures and see what we get okay so the approximation so this is a special case where we are going to take two we make two assumptions the first assumption is h of z is m of z which is minimum phase okay so what happens in this case and sn will take to be white okay some n right so these are the assumptions that we're going to make and uh, if you do that what happens to the zero forcing dfe what is the precursor can go back and look at the expressions and try to derive it so h not is 1 okay and the minimum phase is m of z it's 1 right so the overall finally the precursor will become 1 so precursor won't do anything okay and what will be w of z Okay, equal to m of z right it has to work out this way so you see the zero forcing dfe in the special case became the same zero forcing dfe we had before in the m of z right noise is already white so you don't have to make it white by doing anything else and then you do slicing and then you do just one by m of z for the signals right so that is m of z minus one what is the mmsc dfe for that case what's the precursor
precursor will have some doesn't it have an m star it should be an m star es m star by es mod m squared plus n naught am i right so it's a nasty filter right it's not a very easy filter am i right is it okay so it will be es m star by es mod m squared plus sn okay so and what's w of z it's not easy to figure out this okay right this thing is a little bit more difficult it's the minimum phase component of the denominator that you have here okay so if this you are able to write as es m star by gamma squared mz mz star okay so this will work out to mc is that fine okay so i'm sorry it's not m of z it's mz of z okay so be careful Okay, so that was a problem with the way I chose my presentation. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. So, so it's D times. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, what's the final expression? What does it work out to? Oh my God, I'm getting totally confused now. Okay, so what's the precursor? So you're saying this is not correct, you're right. So that's for D, right? So I don't want to write D. I want to write D times W. Okay. So this will work out to ES by gamma Z square M star divided by M Z star, right? Is that fine? And W is fine, right? W is fine. So that I wrote the expression for D in terms of instead of D W. So precursor is this and M Z. Will be a one by n naught. Oh yeah, one day or not. So not will come back. Okay. So the MSC in this case is what? For the zero forcing PFE. So it will be the geometric mean of N naught by mod M squared, right? Am I right? And the MSC here will be geometric mean of N naught by mod M squared plus N naught by ES. Okay, so you can also write it in so many other ways. This will work out to the same point. Okay, so I know we have some time left, but I think this is a good this is a good place to stop. And the next class. We we'll look at some. We we'll take a simple example and work it through and study. Okay.